I'm looking at the Focus Aventura Impulse 2. And this is the opening price point for Focus, which is a little bit more of a sportier brand of electric bike company that's sort of part of the Derby Cycle Works, Pawn Group. Um, this is like German engineered European bikes that are making their way over to America for 2015. And a, a few of them got onto the market in 2014 and got a lot of people excited. It's neat to see them coming on in force now. And uh, as the opening price point, this bike delivers a lot. This is not your average like starter bike from a lot of other companies. And that's reflected in the price tag. It's $37.99, so it's not super cheap. But for that money, you're getting a really excellent drive system, one that's responsive, powerful for climbing, and also efficient for like really long distance riding. So before I get too into all of that, one of the things I wanna call out as a benefit for a mid-drive system like this is the quick release on the front and the rear wheel. So you can imagine uh, taking this to go to another city or to do a bike ride with a friend or maybe for commuting purposes, you can take those wheels off pretty easily and you can also service flats and change tires uh, more quickly as a result. And because the drivetrain in the rear is just a traditional, you know, cassette. We got Shimano Diore, um, just, you know, cassette. It's regular. It's got a chain and everything. Shops might feel more comfortable working on this that otherwise might shy away from electric bikes. So I do love that. I wanted to point those out uh, before I dig too much deeper. This frame style right here, they call it the trapez. It's like a trapeze kind of makes me think of like a circus or something but it's really just a reinforced um sort of a low step or step through design and so they, they've kind of got like a small diamond they also have the larger more traditional diamond frame available and that comes in three sizes this one comes in a couple and what we're looking at here is the medium size frame uh, so it's just kind of neat that they've they've got a frame that's a little bit easier to approach. You know, kind of step over, and you can stand over this at lights or whatever more easily. So I mentioned earlier the whole Derby Cycle Works, Kalkoff. Kalkoff bikes to me are a little bit more like touring, and they're a little bit more relaxed. They've got kind of swept back handlebars, whereas this one has more of a flat bar, like maybe a very low slight rise to it, and traditional just flat grips as well, although they are ergon, high quality got lockers they aren't going to twist on you um, it's just a more advanced you're going to be leaning forward a little bit more uh, more active riding position and that's reflected in the saddle as well it's a little narrower but it's this sort of Celle Royale gel really soft really comfortable premium saddle and that word premium is just that's true about the whole bike um, from the fenders they're fully integrated reinforced the rear fender especially it's connected to the rack right here and the rack has this pannier blocker, so you're not going to have your bags rubbing on spokes or your tires. You've got integrated lights, LED, as well as these nice reflectors, front and rear. And they're powered off of this, Sh um, I think it's Shimano. Let's see. There we go. Yep, Shimano Dynamo Hub in the front. So that picks up a little bit of energy as you're riding, and then it pipes it up to these lights. And so they're going to work at all times, even if your battery... Uh, completely runs dry and that's just a great safety feature again that's kind of the european thinking where more people would invest in a bike like this instead of a car and it's gonna it's gonna take you and it's gonna hold up and, and really be um, reliable so that's awesome i like that it pivots forward and backwards and they've even got a safety feature um, which is called like a standing light so there's a little capacitor and as you're riding and that dynamo hub's charging it it'll keep powering the light for a few minutes after you've parked so you know, let's say you're on the side of a street and it's nighttime, cars and things might still see you because of that, that little feature. And that's just awesome. It's great to see that in, in the bicycling, bicycling world and especially at like that entry price point. Another safety feature, these cool bells. It's like kind of a funky design the first time I saw it. And now I think I like it. You can reach it really easily along with the um, you know trigger shifters over here, uh, nine speed as we mentioned and the different dials for your display panel over there. We've got these nice hydraulic Shimano disc brakes with 180 millimeter disc in the front and 160 millimeter disc in the rear. They're gonna be a little bit easier to pull with maybe just a finger or two, give you lots of stopping power. They don't have integrated motor cutoff. So what I've noticed is sometimes if I'm sitting at a light or a stop sign and I'm kind of pushing down on, on the cranks, the motor can sometimes activate because this uses three um, sensors. Uh, to make it smooth and efficient but also uh, again in that situation could be a little bit of a question mark for me what it's sensing first is 
the speed of your bicycle. So there's a little magnet, there's a sensor. It's sensing your cadence, so how fast your cranks are turning, and also the torque. Um, so how hard you're pushing on the pedals. And that's why when you're at a light or something, if you push down on that, it, it kind of leaps forward a little bit. Pedals here are Wellgo. I do like that company, and these are nice metal. They got the reflectors and everything like that. Adjustable kickstand. We've got a chain guard on the other side, so your pants and stuff aren't going to get dirty and greasy. So I think that's a good roundup of uh, most of most of the components and stuff, but I should call out that the speed or the uh, the the suspension fork here has a nice little lockout, so you can pretty rapidly just flick this over, and you'll get a nice um, solid rigid fork instead of a little bit of cushion and just a basic SR Suntour or any X uh, fork. Nothing nothing too fancy, but also not super heavy and and not overdone for around town. I think that's great. I love that they've got uh, bottle cage bosses right here because, you know, as a human, probably need some water and a lot of bikes forego that, unfortunately. So it's nice that they, they added those. Good job, guys. <clears throat> okay, maybe I should jump into the motor, but after I mention this pump, check it out. There's actually like a pump that they, they put right on the frame. So if you're out and about and potentially far away from the office or your home or whatever and you you start to get a flat tire you can kind of keep it going you don't have to ride around on your rims and for those people who put like slime in their tires and stuff um, it's good to be able to pump them up and to try to give it a a little bit more life to get you home okay i think we're good there so 250 watt geared mid-drive motor i've already talked about how the sensors work and stuff 250 uh it's it's like efficient right like for riding around town and even climbing these hills and stuff, I've done a little bit of that, a little bit of off-road. It's worked really well, and it's relatively quiet when you're in the higher gears and uh, pretty responsive. So I, I like that. It's probably a little bit lighter uh, as well, and you've got that nice frame balance. Like, everything's center and it's low, which is cool. And then the battery. This is like the superstar right here. It's also center and low. It's removable. It locks. It's got this cool like charging port right here so you can charge on or off the frame. I love that if you took that off, you'd be making the frame even lighter, of course, and you're just gonna be able to store it in like a cool, uh, dry environment. That's gonna help it last longer. You're gonna try to be able to test the, the level right now. It's like four out of five dots. If you can keep it on those center three, kind of at all times when you're storing it, that's gonna help it prolong its life. A lot of electric bike batteries are shipped at like half and it's for the same reason. You're not stressing it at 100, and you're not stressing it at, um, you know, zero. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and show you how that looks and, and weigh it. So we use this key. It's a fancy, you know, kind of like in-cut, routed key design. Got my little scale right here. Okay, so you just twist and pivot. Look at that, real easy. It's easy to hold, I'm not gonna drop it. Go ahead and set it down on my shoe so that we don't scratch it or anything like that 6.6 pounds so not too bad so you take six and a half pounds off the bike just by taking the battery pack off just kind of fit it in there and then make sure the keys are out of the way and it just gently pivots up like that real nice there we go and you don't have to leave the keys in while you're riding there's not going to be any jingling uh, which is uh, preferable and now I think I'm gonna try to weigh the whole bike 51.8 pounds and that's with the fenders with the suspension with the rack it's not too bad that's not too bad at all okay might be time to, to power this thing up so we've got the battery on it's charged we head up here and we've got this little button pad real easy to reach and just nice integrated real clean cockpit press the power button here and it says hello and I'm gonna turn this around. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's just a monochrome, constantly backlit, so like if it's at nighttime, you can kind of see it still. And if it's glaring in your eyes, you can actually pivot it, which is really nice on the fly like that. Very simple, not removable, unfortunately, but it's you know pretty sturdy and minimal. So anyway, speed, it's in kilometers per hour right now. I'm gonna try to change that to miles per hour by holding set for a little couple of seconds. There we go. And it changed to miles per hour. So now we've got zero because uh, we're not moving. We've got the battery level indicator. And I love that it has so many increments because it's just, it's more precise on how much battery you have. It's not just like three LEDs. And then we've got trip distance, 
or the odometer, which is lifetime distance. And to change between those two, you press the set button again. So now we're on odometer. Now we're on trip distance. To reset trip distance, I'll hold the minus for a couple seconds. And there we go, cleared. Okay, right now it's in power mode because I think that's where it was left last. I'm gonna go ahead and arrow down to sport, eco, and off. So you can ride this thing just like a regular bike. I mean, you pedal backwards if you want to, use those gears, nine speeds, and it'll work just fine. And this will act as a cycle computer. Now, as soon as you want power, of course, you just press the plus, you go up to eco, plus again, sport, and plus one more time is power. So there's just, there's a good range. There is no throttle on this, and that's part of what's gonna help you know, get you further. You are gonna be working a little bit more because it's got the torque sensor and the cadence sensor, but it's meant to respond to you and feel more like a traditional bicycle, right? And especially with a model like this, that's a little more active and you're kind of leaning forward and everything. Um, I think that's that's pretty nice, you know? This, this whole thing, it's more bicycle-like than like a scooter or a motorcycle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that kickstand, kick it up, get going. I'm in power mode right now. I'm gonna do a little bit of off-roading Let's see. And the bike does offer shift sensing technology. So when you're shifting gears, it's going to like let up on the motor for a second so that you don't, you know, mash that, that chain and that cassette. And it should help those components to wear better over time, to last longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and position the camera pointing that way. And you should be able to see um, and hear the motor sort of letting off a little bit as I shift. You can see it cuts out relatively quickly after I stop pedaling. Um, maybe a little bit longer than the Bosch system I've tried before, but um, whoa, the torque sensor is, is definitely noticeable. And uh, I just think that overall, when I've been riding these bikes, climbing hills and stuff, I, I haven't had a problem. I haven't had an issue with the way that it performs. And I feel like it's also, you know, pretty pretty quiet at in these higher gears but now i'm going to switch to like a lower gear so right now i'm in six i'm going to switch it up to let's see here take it down to like three now you should hear the motor more because it's spinning faster Go ahead and take it back on road and, and you can hear it there too. Woo! Got a little bit of a hill right here to climb. Definitely not uh, not struggling. Yeah, these are these are pretty sweet bikes for an entry an entry offering here. It's definitely uh, offering a lot of performance for sure. So that's the Focus Aventura Impulse 2. It's using the Impulse 2.0 drive system. And for the full write up on this, including pictures, specs, and other Focus electric bikes, I'll see you back at Electric Bike Review dot com.